Hi, my name is Simon, and I'm the director of The Pirate Bay Away From Keyboard, a feature documentary about the founders of the world's largest file sharing site. Right now, it's a really exciting time. We're one month away from the Court of Appeal hearings in Stockholm, Sweden, and I'm in Southeast Asia following the story. A couple of years ago, I accidentally ran into Broken, one of the three founders of the Pirate Bay. Over a cup of coffee, he told me how the White House had threatened the Swedish government because of his and his buddy's hobby homepage. He told me how the Pirate Bay had tried to buy an island to create a nation of their own without copyright laws. He also told me about the Pirate Bay's involvement with WikiLeaks. I was totally amazed by the stories Brokip told me. And at that point, I hadn't even met the other two founders. When I finally did meet Tsuyamo, Anakata, and Brokip and saw them in the same room together, I realized that the real story here is between them within the context of the global copyright conflict. I've been following this story for almost two years now. Right now, I'm sitting on over 200 hours of incredible footage. This is where I need your help. In the past, I've edited myself, but with this amazing story, I want to find a great editor that can help me tell a complex story in the best possible way. The money I raise here would go to hire a professional editing studio and an editor. A lot of people keep asking me, how can you make a movie about the Pirate Bay when they're killing your own business as a filmmaker? They say that file sharing is killing creativity. Well, to me, the answer is simple. I don't believe in it. I believe in finding new ways of rewarding culture. This is one such way. Help me prove them wrong. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much. Um, it's almost exactly one year ago uh, that I awkwardly posted this video on the uh, American uh, site kickstarter.com. Uh, it was the 28th of um, August 2010. And um, I say awkward because uh, I'm a cameraman. I'm used to being behind the camera. And uh, also I, uh, I had thought that when you want to fund a movie, you would just post a trailer from the film, obviously. But I was advised specifically to not uh, post a trailer, but to uh, film myself, be personal, and specify what the money uh, would go to. And um, it made me realize that, um, much like I want to know, um, when I'm at Drotting Toyot, uh, buying my organic uh, zucchini, or uh, f from some guy who, who grew it in, a, in his apartment window or at his farm or whatever, um, it makes my omelet taste a little bit better um, when I know who, produ who produced the, um, the, the product. And I, I really think that nowadays people uh, want to know uh, who the people are behind the media that they consume uh, as well. So uh, uh, with the help of this film and some other factors, uh, we managed to raise $51,424 in just one month, and um, uh <laughs> and uh, that was from with the help of 1,737 backers from uh, all over the world. And uh, now I'm going to tell you a little bit of um, how we did how we did this. So, as a filmmaker, a lot of uh, energy goes into uh, finding money uh, for your project. Your goal, naturally, is to uh, convince financiers that your particular project or your particular, particular story is uh, the world's most important film right now. So, uh, for me, uh, in, the past, in the past 10 years that I've been trying to produce my own um, documentary films, uh, the main uh, institutions for documentary financing have been the, uh, the, the Swedish national broadcaster, SVT, uh, a regional film fund, Film Iskone, that are here today. Thank you, I love you. And uh, then the Swedish Film Institute, uh, with a considerably higher sort of threshold. And um, also, if the uh, projects had any form of sort of international uh, potential, I would try, uh, with very mixed results, uh, to sell them uh, to TV stations and such abroad. Uh, in 2000, oh, sorry guys, I'm pressing the wrong button here. <laughs> um, so uh, in 2008, I uh, I stumbled on a project that I was dead sure was going to be 
finally easy to uh, find uh, financing for. And um, it was a film about the Pirate Bay, the world's most, the world's largest and most notorious uh, file sharing site. And um, the media industry's trial against the Pirate Bay that started in 2009 got massive uh, international media coverage. And I, would certain, I was certain that this was a story that had, um, that had personal drama, that had political drama, and it had implications that affected everybody all over the world in their private lives. I was certain that this would be easy to finance. So I got some help from my, from my friend in, in, in the regional uh, film fund here in Filmis Gona, and, uh, and I got some interest from, uh, from, the, from SVT and, uh, and some, some vague promises, but as we all know, promises don't pay any bills. So um, off I went to uh, a documentary conference to find, uh, to find uh, financing and look for international co-producers. And uh, I went to Sheffield, to England, and uh, I, I pitched my story to a lot of different TV commissioners and I met a lot of uh, industry people, people in the, uh, in the documentary uh, film world, and I was really surprised and shocked to hear that a lot of these people had never even heard about the, the Pirate Bay. They, they'd never... They never heard about the largest film distributor in the history of mankind. Um, they didn't know about it. So a lot, of, a lot of people told me that, you know, call us back when you have a clearer story. Uh, and um, and the, the one question that everybody seemed to be asking was, why would my particular uh, territory, my particular audience, why would they want to be interested in a, in a documentary about Swedish uh, hackers? So. Um, I came home uh, with this feeling of uh, sort of my first pitching experience was was a lukewarm one, you know. Um, they were like, "Call us back," you know. And I was all the time I was wondering, "Do you guys know what your kids are doing at home? Have you got any clue at all?" Uh, and I was kind of slightly disappointed. But my new internet friends, the guys and girls that I was actually filming, the subjects in my in my story. Um, that I was stalking with my camera everywhere I went for the past two years. Some of them are even in this crowd. Um, they helped me, uh, and they told me about this new, new site, this crowdfunding site called Kickstarter uh, that uh, lets you uh, finance your cultural projects. You know, it could be films or comics or, or uh, music or anything, basically, food. So, uh, and the basic idea was that uh, you, you offered um, not ownership in the project, but you offered creative rewards. So, um, so uh, we decided to um, so tr to try this out, and we launched this project. And this, sorry, I'm confused again here. <laughs> this is Kickstarter, as we know, and this is our project page um, when we just um, when we had finished uh, our um, our campaign, and um, and then the um, I was advised to focus not on a short, um, not on a long uh, campaign, but rather on a shorter campaign. Um, on a third-day campaign, that is, and, and um, I was told that it's more important uh, rather have a short campaign and work towards uh, a specific date that means something to your project uh, than have a long 90-day, three-month campaign. People lose interest, you know. So, um, so we decided to go for um, for a third-day campaign and to f finish the campaign on the 28th of um, of uh, September, the day the Court of Appeal uh, proceedings and the Pirate Bay trials started last year. So we had a defined date to work against. And, and then we decided to... Um also, we had, to come up, we had to come up with a number, obviously. How much do we want? How much do we need? And we had really no clue at all. But um, when I talked to the Kickstarter people um, and suggested $25,000, they, they thought that that's possible. You know, it's, it's fairly high at that point in time. Uh, but some other projects had pulled it through, and they thought, yeah, you might, you might, you might happen, you know. But they warned me, you know, you need, we don't pull any traffic to your projects. You need to take care of that yourself. Okay, so we decided for that. $25,000. We had no clue. Um, and also, I'm just going to go through real fast. Um, down here on the right, you can see it says pledge $10 or more. We had our, little f our financing ladder. For 10 bucks. people would get a link for the finished, uh, the finished film, which is great because that doesn't cost us anything. It's just a link. For $25, people would get a, um, a DVD, the finished film. It's basically a pre-buy. So uh, for $60, bucks, they would get Finsta, 
my good friend and uh, collaborator and artist who has done all the um, all the artwork for the film, uh, they would get his T-shirt for 60 bucks. And then for $100, they would get uh, the T-shirt and the DVD. For $500, they would get all of that, plus credits in the film. And for $5,000, uh, they would get it at... I would come to your personal screening or whatever and talk about my film. Nobody wanted that, of course. So, <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, um, we, uh, after that, we, um, we put our doodle, or our banner, if you will, on uh, the Pirate Base uh, first page and pointed that to our Kickstarter campaign. And also, we, uh, we built a blog uh, where we posted clips from the documentary Creative Commons licensed, and we also put a Flatter button there. Everybody has learned about Flatter now, I hope. And um, and then after that, in uh, in the very same Phnom pen that you saw uh, in the in the Tuk Tuk uh, ride here, uh, from this very balcony at five or six in the morning, <laughs> uh, we launched the project. Um, uh, finally, on the date we made it, sort of. Uh, so um, it took around an hour or so. Um, until we got the first uh, email, and it said, uh, "Yancy Strickler has just uh, financed your film, back to your film with ten dollars," and we were like, "Fuck, who's this Yancy Strickler? Where, who's this dude? We love him. He's uh, hey." And then uh, it took another maybe ten minutes or so, and then emails started coming in. It just went boink, boink, boink in my inbox, and then it just went boink, 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 and uh, and we were just sitting there on this balcony in the in. in uh, this early morning, and we were just like, "What is this real? Are all these people giving us money now? Is this?" It was very, very bizarre, and uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was an un undescribable feeling. But uh, after a couple of hours, I had to go into my mail um, applications preferences and change the sound from boink, boink, boink to kaching, kaching, kaching. <laughs> so, so, um, yeah. So it kept saying kaching for around three days, and uh, at that point, we had um, finally accumulated. Um, uh, $51,424 and all, oh, sorry, $25,000. We had reached our goal, so to speak. And also three days was, uh, was what we had, uh, that was the arrangement with the Pirate Bay guys as well, that we would take down the, the doodle from the Pirate Bay after three days. That's what they do when they do, uh, when they promote stuff, it's usually three days. So it was a co coincidence that we reached that goal uh, during the time that we had talked to them about having our doodle on the first page. So um, also, uh, like Daniel mentioned, uh, the, the, this is awesome, uh, $51,000, getting $50,000 from the internet is amazing, but the feeling of, of getting a response, the psychological feeling of getting, you know, big ups from, from 100, you know, I don't know, 171 countries, and we had traffic, unique traffic of, of maybe 450,000 people, uh, was, was just uh, undescribable, and, and uh, I guess... Uh, as a creator, you know it means a lot to get you get positive feedback. You know we got negative feedback as well, but that's that's almost just as encouraging actually. So um, so I believe there were some extraordinary circumstances to this um, to this campaign and this project uh, that made this project more successful than uh, say my last uh, film would have been about South African car thieves. Um, I think the single most uh, important reason for our success was uh, the secret weapon of uh, the Pirate Bay's immense uh, traffic. Uh, the Pirate Bay, um <laughs> the Pirate Bay, at this point last year was around the 94th uh, or so uh, biggest website on the internet. It was uh, right there, up there, I think, between Google, Poland, and New York Times, and uh, I guess that's a uh, quite a big, uh, quite a good. Um, Example. I mean, imagine buying New York Times first page for three days straight, and you're the only banner there. Um, so I guess that was the the single biggest reason we um, we were so successful. And I think that the second uh, reason was the Pirate Bay's huge global community. The Pirate Bay is a user-generated site, um, totally dependent on their uploaders and uh, downloaders, and seeders and leechers, and it's even moderated by volunteers. And uh, despite the fact that you, uh, that you don't have to uh, become a member of uh, the Pirate Bay, you don't have to register, sorry, uh, to download, uh, five million people today are registered users at the Pirate Bay, which also is almost twice as much uh, as it was when I started filming this project three years ago. So um, by generously sharing their community with us, 
Um, and I say sharing. Um, the Pirate Bay guys lent us the trust that they had built up uh, with their community over the years. So I think the third reason uh, f for our uh, success was uh, the topic. I think that the internet and um, the freedom of information and file sharing means a lot to a lot of people uh, out there today. And um, partly, I think, because, uh, of course, it, it uh, affects our everyday lives all over the world. Also, also I think that um, the pirate base fuck you attitude towards the big uh, media corporations captured the feelings of a generation and uh, played a big part in our success. So our recipe was traffic from a top domain, a vibrant community, and the topic of a generation. And um, well, to, to conclude, that's, that's uh, you know, for an ind independent documentary production, these are extremely rare privileges to have. So um, uh, the, the $51,000 we raised on this um, crowdfunding campaign is roughly 10% of the film budget. Um, but what happened uh, in, this, in this very year after the campaign, a lot of things have happened with the project. And one of the things that struck me most is the fact that traditional financers ha have jumped aboard to a much larger extent than, than what they did before, um, d before I did this, uh, this campaign. And um, basically, when financers see that, uh, that a project already has a documented audience, it means, it means less risk for them uh, to back the project. Um, so yes, in many ways we had a we had a bit of a special case. Uh, still, I definitely think that people should try crowdfunding. Um, I mean, bypassing the middlemen who don't necessarily always understand your your project and pitching directly to the audience is an extremely powerful tool. And um, also, of course, the jigsaw puzzle of um, more democratic, more transparent and more fun financing models on the internet is just being laid out right now. So uh, please, everybody, I encourage you guys to try it. Thank you.